Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Harlan Parrott coming to you again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the 25th day of November, the year 2007. We're continuing our study on God's wonderful plan for the needs of man and what God has in store for mankind. We're on supplement number six for lessons 11 and 12. And we're going to speak today on the laws of prosperity. In lesson 11... We have studied the dispensation of conscience and all the dealings of God with man for 1,656 years until the time of Noah. We have seen that the purpose of the devil was to do away with the coming of the seed of the woman, who is Jesus Christ, of course, into the world in order to advert his own doom and to keep possession of the earth indefinitely. Satan was defeated in his plan for this age and all succeeding ages, and the Messiah finally came, who made full provision for every man to have power to defeat all satanic forces and to assure for himself the benefits of God, not only for this life, but for the life to come, eternal life. In Lesson 12, we have studied why God's plan for the needs of man are not fully realized. While there is such widespread failure, poverty, sickness, and unhappiness among men on earth in this life, and while these conditions should not exist. We have seen that it is not, nor could it be God's will for man to suffer misery and want in order to have him keep humble enough to finally be saved that this does not have to be man's lot in life, that he is enabled by the gospel to overcome all the obstacles of life and be saved, prosperous and happy in Christ and the gospel, and that many of the doctrines that are now being taught by man in modern churches are false and unscriptural. We have seen that man is under a moral obligation to have faith in God and never to doubt one thing that he asks of God. Man cannot secure his best good, nor that of his fellow man, when he is living in defeat and failure in any aspect of life. He cannot endure these things for the sake of God or Christ. He ensures them solely for the sake of his own failure and because of false doctrines of men. It is almost unpardonable to be satisfied to endure defeat when it is in one's power to do otherwise. The following are the laws of prosperity whereby all men can have guaranteed success in life if they will obey these laws. Laws of Prosperity Number one, the first law of prosperity is to believe that it is God's will for you to prosper and that you are in his will. Contrary to common opinion, God wants you to be prosperous. If this is a fact, and it is, then God will see to it that you are prosperous if you will learn the laws of prosperity and cooperate with them and with God in all things. Why should it be God's will for you to lack the things you need in life if you are his child and then give them to rebels against him? This does not make any sense, and until Christians wake up to believe the whole Bible and demand that their leaders teach the whole truth or quit, we will never see prosperity, happiness, and success among all Christians as they should be. God has created in the world an abundance of everything that men need, and there is enough for all. He laid down certain laws of life and of prosperity, and all he asks us to do is to obey these laws. These laws are plainly revealed in the Bible, and they are given for all men to follow. Those who follow them will surely reap the benefits promised to all alike. As we have seen in Lesson 10, God's providence is over all his creation, and he has given abundant promises for all the needs of men. Men cannot read all the promises listed in Lesson 10, point number 3, without being convinced that it is the highest will of God to bless his children with prosperity and all that they need and want in this life here and now. Let it be firmly settled in that 
You are in harmony with the will of God when you desire to prosper and be in health and have victory over sin and failure in life. Number two, the second law to follow is to make God your partner in life. Work with him and obey his laws of prosperity. Make him the senior partner in your business. Give him the seat at the head of the table in all your business conferences. Recognize him in all that you do. Keep in touch with him concerning his guidance in every business deal. Recognize his presence with you always. Talk to him about your problems as you would talk to your best friend. After all, he is your best friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Turn all your problems over to him. Don't make a move without feeling sure that it is the will of God and for the best interest of all concerned. If you will give all your hard problems to God to solve, if you will simply stop fretting and worrying over them and trust God with all your heart to work out things to his glory and your good, he will do it. After turning things over to God to handle it for you, then don't interfere and spoil things. Stay out of them until God works them out. Don't be impatient and unbelieving. If God is your senior partner and he is running your business, trust him, for it could not be operated by anyone better. Since you believe that God can handle all your problems better than you can, let him do it. He will remove all obstacles. He will work for your good. Believe his word that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them who are called according to his purpose. That's found in Romans 8:28. Since God cannot fail, you cannot fail. If you keep all things committed to him and trust him to keep you and make you a success in life. God never meant for his children to become failures as such failures are a reflection upon him just as any failing sinful and rebellious child would be a disgrace upon his parents. If God is different and the only father that would be glorified by failures on the part of his children, then he would be a tyrant. And we know he's at least better than we are because we wouldn't desire things like that upon our children. Is he abnormal and the only one that would desire the worst for his children instead of the best? Is he the only father that gets pleasure in the failures of his children? Of course not. Jesus taught us that God loves us more than we love our own children. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? We are the only ones that hold back the floodgates of God's abundant blessings, and as long as we believe that God is hard, unloving Father, we cannot hope to receive these benefits. The truth is that nothing makes God happier than to see his people blessed, happy and successful in all that they do in life. Let it be remembered that we said his children are not rebels against him, for they are children of the devil. John 8:44 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8-10 through 10. 
He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Real children of God will not get into any business that is sinful, so we say that any legitimate business and anything that is worthwhile, God will prosper in this phase of life. Making God your partner implies full surrender of your life to Him and obedience to His word in all things and constant dependence upon God to know His will and the ways that would cause you to prosper. Without God's approval and God's help, you are already headed for failure, but with Him guiding you at every step, you cannot fail. Be sure that your plans, ambitions, and your undertakings are all in harmony with the best will of God, and then go ahead, fearing nothing. If you want to overcome the obstacles that have been holding you back, start right now to take God into your life and obey Him, and He will lead you into prosperity. Where you leave off your self-efforts and stop leaving God out of your life, right there you will begin to experience God, His life, His wisdom, and His power begin to manifest all around you. Christ came to give life and give it more abundantly, so there is no limitation in God unless you limit Him by your unbelief and failure to appropriate the promised benefits. John 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Number three. The third law of prosperity is to get into the life work that you feel God would have you in or that for which you are best suited. God has a life work for you, and you can be extremely happy and successful if you find that work and then make God your lifelong partner. If your life work is not clear to you, get this settled once and forever. At least you can know what your present work is is at all times, and if ever there comes a time when your work should be changed, you will move in the will of God as you have been doing. As you go along, God will guide you and open up doors and opportunity for you to step into. You are capable of filling your place in life, and you can do your work better than anyone else. Put your whole life into your work, realizing it is for God and others that you do the work. The thing God considers is whether we work honestly and faithfully at our calling in life. This is all that He asks, and He will reward us accordingly. Real happiness lies in liking to do what we have to do, not in doing what we think we would like to do. You can be very unhappy if you permit yourselves to think that you are in the wrong kind of life work. Thousands of people are in the right kind of work and are unhappy because they yearn for the wrong kind of work. When God plans it for you, then you should stay in what he planned for you. When plans do not materialize or when doors close to you in one occupation, look to God who will open doors for you in another. Become content with your lot and make a success of what you are doing, and then you will be capable of success in other ways. But if you do not make su success at any one thing, and are always dissatisfied with every kind of work, it is not the work that is wrong, it is you. You must get a hold of yourself and conquer that shiftless spirit, and God will help you become stable, contented, successful, and happy in His will in any kind of honest work. Ask God to guide you into your life work and in His best plan for you. Talk things over with Him and wait for His guidance while you are waiting. You will have peace of mind if you will be content. When He starts guiding you, you may not first understand what He is guiding you into. If you are in your right work, seek God in order to open up greater fields of service. 
If you are in the wrong work, much prayer will open up the right doors for you. Be constantly in tune with God and praise Him for His help in life. Thank Him for the work you already have. Act as if God is guiding you. Be happy and contented in your work, and you will be successful. Number four. The fourth law of prosperity is faith in God. You must believe that God loves you and that he is with you, giving you strength to overcome all hindrances to your happiness and success in life. All men who have made a success in life have had to finally overcome all opposition to their progress. The lives of successful people abound in stories of how they overcame obstacles and finally succeeded. This life of overcoming obstacles will continue through life even in success and happiness. It is such struggle in life that you need faith in God. All your obstacles are small and shrink in nothingness when compared to the promises of God and the faith in God they create. When your troubles seem like giants, steal away in secret and pray. Get a good night's rest. Read the promises of God and have faith in God and they will become very small. If your problems persist, get your mind off them. Turn them over to God and forget them for the time being and you will find that God will take care of them better than you could ever take care of them. We are told to commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass, in Psalm 37, verse 5. The law of success will work without fail because God's word cannot fail. The more you do this and the less you think of hindrances in your life, the more you will overcome them. God is your father if you have surrendered to him. He can be trusted. He will keep his promises better than any earthly friend. Get his promises in you and you abide in him and then you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. John 15 verse 7. What a blessing to know that God is with you and that by faith in him you can do all things and get what you want. Your enemies cannot triumph. Your problems cannot defeat you. God cannot fail. The minute you are tempted to worry and fret about some problem, turn it over to God. He can see farther than you can. He can work out things that are invisible to you. Throw your worries away and become reckless in faith and confidence in God and accept what comes with peace and thankfulness. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. First John 5, verse 1 through 4. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Number five, the fifth law of prosperity is to be unafraid in launching out into new ventures and to make the best of your opportunities that come. Many men could have been prosperous in life if they had not been afraid to take hold of opportunities that came to them. Have no fear. If you have been praying for things to happen that would cause you to be prosperous, God is sure to open up many doors of opportunity. You must not be afraid to enter them under the guidance of God. Have confidence in yourself and in God that he is leading you and that you cannot fail. In going into new ventures, be led of God as to how far to go and how much to invest. Do not go into debt beyond your ability to pay. Do not become reckless and act unwisely. Be led of God and go as far as you feel he would have you to go and as far as common sense dictates. Do not get your eyes on sudden riches and overstep yourself. You can always grow, and a steady, healthy growth in business with security is better than blowing a bubble beyond the bursting point. 
Act sensibly and wisely, and you will succeed. Let the law of increase work for you normally. Stay within your ability to take care of business and build on a solid foundation that will last. Number six, the sixth law of prosperity is to follow certain business principles taught in Scripture. Paul laid down some business principles when he said in Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 21, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality, bless them that persecute you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. If one will obey these principles in business, he cannot help becoming happy, prosperous, and successful in all that he undertakes. Paul further taught Christians that you study to be quiet and to do your own business and work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Solomon said, Seest thou a man diligent in business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean or obscure or unknown men. Proverbs 22, verse 29. These passages teach that a man should be constantly at the job of making a success. Do not let any grass grow under your feet. Use every legitimate means of success and do not neglect one opportunity to reach your goal. This may mean self-sacrifice to begin with. It will mean many hours of hard work. It will mean much prayer to God for guidance. It will mean be, being honest with all men and living to serve others by your business. Some people do not care to succeed in life enough to obey the laws of prosperity. They are naturally shiftless, careless, indifferent, and unconcerned about their responsibilities. They would not put forth the least effort beyond what they feel like doing in order to succeed. They are like sinners who know they are lost and doomed to hell and don't care. Or they are like some sick people who know how to get well but will not put forth the effort to meet the necessary conditions. If sinners cared whether they go to hell or not, not one of them would neglect his salvation one minute. So would some men succeed in life if they cared to put forth the best effort that is in them to make a success. If you do not put forth the proper effort to prosper, do not expect God to bless you with prosperity. Number seven, the seventh law of success is to obey the golden rule. This means that you will always do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you do this, you will never take advantage of any man in order to prosper. You will always be fair and square in all of your business dealings, giving your customers value for money received. You will never skimp in making products or cheat in selling them. You will never misrepresent one item you sell. You will not put off on the public what you would not use. You will never be dishonest to any man. You will always tell the truth. You will never be selfish. You will always be friendly, courteous, helpful, happy, and consecrated to serve your fellow man and to please God. You will always let your customers know how you appreciate their business and show them how you seek to be of service to them. You must be a real human being and make people feel that they would like to be around you. You can be that kind of man or woman. 
no matter what your age, appearance, education, or position in life, you can be real and attractive in your personality. If you will let Christ live in and through you, he will make you free from all dullness and will fill your life with charm and influence. Power and radiance come from a change of heart and from Christ living in you. Regardless of age, one can have charm, attractiveness, or influence. These qualities cannot be put on in the beauty parlor. They must come from the inward man. It is all right to be as attractive as you can outwardly, and this will help you, but let the greatest attraction be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting of hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Number eight. One unfailing law of prosperity is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we do this, we are promised that all things or blessings of life shall be added unto you. Matthew chapter six, verse 33. The truth is that this puts the interest of the kingdom of God and of others before our own. In doing this, we must recognize that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Luke twelve fifteen, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. If we can ever learn this lesson, we can easily be free from covetousness which makes us selfish and self-centered so that we live only for self. Jesus said, He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew 10.39 In other words, the man that will be so selfish as to hold on to those things of life to please self and satisfy only self will lose the reality of true living and will be banished from eternal society where everyone consecrates himself to God to do those things that are for the best of all the society. But if we will give up our own selfish living and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we will receive an hundredfold in this life and in the life to come everlasting life. That is assured us by Jesus Christ himself. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 through 30. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Giving up self-interest for those of the kingdom of God means consecration to living for the good of all men and the betterment of the society of which we are a part. We are a part of society now, and we cannot cease being a part of it. If everyone would live for the best good of all concern, we would have a heaven on earth. Paul said, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, or whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Romans chapter 14, verse 7 through 11. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, 
As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Number nine, one law of prosperity is that of giving to others. Generally, the person that goes through life always wanting to know what he is going to get out of everything that he does makes a failure and loses what he already has. He loses his friends and becomes an outcast from society. No one wants to be around him, and he goes through life alone. If one would start out with the idea of giving instead of getting, he would succeed. Give service to men in your business, and you prosper. Bless men and seek God and his righteousness in life, and all the blessings you need in life will be added to you. If there is one thing that you can succeed in life in doing, it is giving one can always give, and if he will do this, he will have to give. This is a law that never fails. Jesus said, Give, and it shall be given you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Luke 6.38 Men may temporarily hinder you in making money, but they cannot hinder you from giving. No one wants to hinder you in this phase of life. You become a hero when you give. You are a wonderful person to everybody as long as you have things to give and as long as you are generous to others. Something wonderful happens when you start to give. Start by giving yourself to God and to others to serve them. Give your goods, give your goodwill, give your best wishes, your time and your talents, your life and all that you have, and you will begin receiving both from God and men whom you bless. Once in a while you may find one that will not give you in return but for that one who does not there will be many who will give back to you in appreciation for what you are giving them you should give your all to the service of god and man not because you expect something in return but because you know it is right and because it is your nature and the giving back to you will be a natural result you will have many friends who will be pulling for you to succeed in anything that you undertake they will put forth every effort to help you succeed. One will show you how to make more money. Another will cause an open door of blessing here and there. Others will give you this and that in life that will help you in the time of need. As you are prospered materially and spiritually, give out to others, and your supply will never be exhausted. Given it shall be given you it is not only a divine law, but it is also a divine promise. The Christian thus will prosper, and as he does, he should give himself to hospitality, remembering that love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 12:13. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Romans 13:10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 12. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth for ever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Number 10. The last law of prosperity we will mention is to honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Proverbs 3, verse 6 through 12. If we do this, we will have the promise, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6 through 12. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the firstfruits of all thine increase. 
so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction, for whom the Lord loveth he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. We also have the promise in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, that if we would thus honor God and pay our tithes, they would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there wouldn't be room enough for us to receive it, and he would rebuke the devourer and bless the work of our hands. Malachi 3, verse 10 and 11. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open ye the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. In this passage in Malachi, we have an accusation by God that he was being robbed. We have a command to bring all the tithes into the storehouse, and we have a challenge by God to prove him and see if he would not cause prosperity. If one will pay the tithes or ten percent of all his income, wages, increase, or profit to the Lord and keep books so that there will be no mistakes, God is under obligation to meet his challenge. Mr. Kerr of the Kerr Mason Fruit Jar Company started out tithing when he was in debt, had a mortgage on his home, and was worried and distressed. Within three months after he began to tithe, unexpected and unforeseen blessings came to him in the form of a fruit jar patent. And as he so aptly put it, God opened my eyes to see his love and faithfulness to his promises. That same year, with $100 and a strong faith in God's tithing promises contained in Malachi 3.10, he organized a cooperation which has grown beyond bounds. I have never seen nor heard of a man that has not been blessed when he has been faithful in tithing with faith in God's promises and with faith that God will meet his own obligation to bless in material things. There are no testimonies, as far as I know, of rich men commencing to tithe, but there are many testimonies of men who began to tithe when they were poor and they are now rich. A few may be enumerated as follows. Mr. Crowell, founder of the Quaker Oats Company. Mr. Colgate, founder of the Colgate Soaps, Perfumes, and Powders. Mr. Proctor of the Ivory Soap Company. A. A. Hyde of Mentholatum fame. Henry Delaney of Resinol Ointment Renown. Mr. Matthias Baldwin, founder of the Baldwin Locomotive Industry. R. G. Lactornia maker of the large earth-moving equipment. Men cannot practice the above-mentioned laws of prosperity without being prosperous. They cannot truly give themselves to God and others to be a blessing to them in business or otherwise without reaping the rich rewards promised in the laws of prosperity. If you want to prosper, set your own house in order and follow faithfully the laws stated above, and soon God will lead you into blessings that you never thought were possible for you. Apply yourself to a strict observance of these laws and principles and watch things happen that will bless you more than you are blessing others.